He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Get ready for a time of healing and deliverance as we receive the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you are ready for the word tonight. Hallelujah. Last week, we started a series titled The Inside Job. And we looked at a message titled An Enemy Called Conformity last week. And tonight, by the grace of God, I want us to take that message to the next level as we look at the second part of uh, this series titled uh, Developing a Winning Mentality. Developing a Winning Mentality. So if you're ready for the word of God tonight, can I ask you to bow your hearts in prayers as we say a word of prayer together. At this point, please speak to God. Ask Him to speak to you. Speak to me, Lord Jesus, for I need to hear from you. The Bible says that God will not do anything except He reveals it to His servant, the prophet. So the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Lord, let your word proceed from your mouth to us tonight so that our lives can never, ever remain the same. In the name of Jesus, I receive a mouth and a wisdom that no one will be able to gainsay nor resist tonight. Use me to release your word to bless your people beyond our wildest dreams tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. So if you've got your Bibles with you tonight, can I ask you to open with me once again to the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And I will also be reading the book of Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, the A part. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The Bible says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, the A part. Bible says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Once again, the title of this second part of um, this uh, series is Developing a winning mentality, developing a willing mentality. Hallelujah. Before I go ahead tonight, I want you to know something, beloved, that you cannot accomplish anything tangible in life if your mentality is not strong. If you do not have the mentality or the attitude or disposition of a winner, that is why the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7 that we read, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever you think is what you experience. You are a product of your thoughts. You are a product of your thoughts. If you think success, you will experience success. If you think failure, you will experience failure. That is me just giving it to you straight on like that. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So your mind, your thinking, your mentality is very important in your endeavor for success. Hallelujah. And when you talk about uh, your thoughts or your thinking, your mind plays a massive role in it. Hence the reason why the Bible is always stressing on a renewal of mind. In fact, when Jesus came to die for us, to, and then he resurrected, he, he died, he was buried and he resurrected and he gave us victory. Everything from that point on for us to be able to achieve and to accomplish and to enjoy the goodness of his provision, the fullness of his provision, we need to renew our mind. For you to lead a successful Christian life, it is so uh, attached to the renewal of your mind. 
glory to God. When you talk about uh, renewing your mind, uh, by renewing your mind, we're talking about you retraining, restoring or resetting your mind. Psalms 23, verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. Verse 3. He restores my soul. Restoration of your soul is the same as the renewal of your mind. He restores my soul. Your soul is your mind. Your mind, your intellect, your emotions. That is your soul. And the Bible says, God restores he renews, he resets, uh, he recalibrates my mind. Uh, he leads me in the paths uh, of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, glory to God. When your mind is renewed, people of God, your mindset, uh, mentality, and worldview changes. Amen. Last week, we talked about you not being a conformist. We said for you, the purpose of God is that you be transformed so that you can transform your community. You cannot experience transformation without first renewing your mind. Glory to God. The main way by which you experience transformation is through the renewal of your mind. That is what Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So no renewal, no transformation. No renewal, no transformation. You renew your mind. You, your, your mind talks about your mindset, mentality, and worldview, the way you see things. Glory to God. You renew your mind. You renew your thinking, your attitude, your speech, and everything. When your mind is renewed, your thinking changes. Your attitude changes. Your speech changes. Where you have believed that you are a victim, you start believing that you are a victor, and you begin to walk like one. You know, when your mind is renewed uh, according to the will of God, where your shoulders have dropped before and you've been walking about uh, without confidence, you will square your shoulders and you begin to stretch your neck, looking up. Glory to God. Because you are a victor. You know that you are a victor. You begin to feel like a victor. You begin to speak like a champion. And you begin to walk like one and act like one. And guess what happens? You begin to experience victory all around you. Hallelujah. A positively renewed mindset makes you fight mediocrity like crazy. When your mindset is renewed, you will not settle down for average. You will go for excellence. Hallelujah. A renewed mind makes you look and sound arrogant to average people. Mediocres and average people will think that you are arrogant. They wouldn't recognize that it is the renewal of your mind that is making you speak like a child of God. Hallelujah. Jesus had a different mindset. He had a different mentality, a different spirit and a different disposition to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And that is why those guys hated him. They felt he was arrogant. They felt he was quirky. He called himself the son of God. And they thought, how can you call yourself a son of God? Kill him. Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua and Caleb, we talked about them last week. They had a different spirit, a different mindset to the 10 spies. We see that in Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. God said, these guys have a different spirit. There, spirit there talks about attitude and disposition. When the other guy said, we are like grasshoppers, Joshua and Caleb said, we are are giant killers. Those giants are like bread to us. They did not even compare them to a living thing. They said they are like bread. They are processed food. We want to eat them and we want to eat them now. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. We checked this out last week as well. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, 
casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Did you see that? Verse 5, he says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. So you need to renew your mind. Real spiritual warfare is a battle of the mind. An unrenewed mind is a playing field of the devil. If your mind is not renewed, if you still think like an old, your whole self, you're not born again, you still think like the way you used to think before you got saved. You, your mind and your life is a playing field for the devil. But for you to begin to experience the victory that Jesus had gotten for you, the victory that he has obtained for you, after you've given your life to Jesus, the biggest decision you need to make is the decision to renew your mind. As I said earlier on, the real spiritual warfare is a battle of the mind. A lot of times we engage in spiritual warfare and we are binding and losing. Thank God for that. There is a place for that. But if truth be told, the real spiritual warfare, beloved, is in your mind. Real spiritual warfare is in your mind. That is where the devil comes to challenge you. In your thinking. Contending with thoughts that are trying to hinder you from believing God's word and promises is a real spiritual warfare. Because the devil will always come to contend with the promises that God has given you. Thank God for the promises. Thank God for the word that he has given you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. Thank God for that. But I don't want you to be fooled. The fact that you've received the word doesn't mean you, will, uh, you don't have a battle to fight. The devil will fight that word uh, with everything he's got. But uh, you will have to stand your ground and tell the devil who is the boss. You tell him where to stay by renewing your mind and going for the promises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the book of Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and also Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 3, 1 to 13, we see Jesus being led of the Spirit into the wilderness uh, where he went to have a, a, a prayer and fasting session for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and the Bible says afterwards he became hungry and the devil came to tempt him. The message translation, translation says that the devil came and tested him. So he was tested. But you know something, beloved, every time I read that word i hold or that portion of the bible i always believe that the temptation came in the mind i don't think it was a physical it could have been but in my own mind uh, according to the scriptures uh, i believe the devil came to attack jesus in his mind but because jesus had a renewed mind uh, jesus had the word of god residing in his spirit uh, and all over him Jesus was able to whoop the backside of the devil all the time. The devil had, you know, tempted him three times and all three times uh, Jesus whooped his backside. I see someone with a renewed mind whoop the backside of the devil tonight uh, in the name of Jesus. If that is you, say amen. Glory to God. If that is you one more time, say amen. The last time the devil defeated you will be the last time you'll ever experience defeat in your life uh, in the name of Jesus. From tonight, uh, you will develop uh, a strong mind uh, and a strong spirit uh, that will fight the devil and will gain victory all the time. All the promises of God for your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. From tonight, you will not experience any labor loss anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. The promises of God in your life will not go unfulfilled again in the precious name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, 
after Jesus had been tempted by the devil, see what the Bible says from the message translations. The Bible says that the test was over and the devil left. And in his place, angels, angels came and took care of Jesus' need. At times, uh, we go through situations in life. God has given us a promise, but it seems like these promises are delayed in being fulfilled or manifested. And the devil comes and gives you an option so that you can compromise. And more often than not, we compromise and we fall short uh, of the will of God. But in the case of Jesus, uh, Jesus did not fall short. Jesus took, stood his ground. And how did he stand his ground? He stood his ground by using the word. He said, it is written. It is written. And by so doing, he stood his ground. And the Bible says, Gee, the devil left. He resisted the devil finally and the devil left him. Immediately the devil left. See what happened? Angels came and took care of Jesus' need. That need that seemed like, oh, I cannot do without, I will not survive if my need is not met now. As long as Jesus stood his ground, the devil lost and angels came. God's provision came and took care of that need. What is that pressure that you are going through tonight? And the enemy and the world is telling you, come on, stop. You know, everybody does it. The fact that you're a Christian doesn't mean you shouldn't do what we are doing. Come on, don't compromise. Don't, don't go back to Egypt. Stay with the word. Stay with God. Stand on the word. When you stand on the word and you stand with Jesus, the enemy will depart. The devil will lose that battle in your life and angels will come and they will take care of your needs. As they took care of Jesus' needs, they will take care of your needs. Tonight, I declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will experience the ministry of angels in the mighty name of Jesus. Where things have been difficult, angels of God are dispatched on your behalf to make things easy in the mighty name of Jesus. Your needs are met, your bills are paid, your debts are cancelled, you have more than enough in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. If you believe that one more time, type amen in your chat. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to God. So angels came to minister to the needs of Jesus. That's why we should always uh, or take the renewing of our minds uh, with the word of God very seriously. Jesus' mind at the word uh, stood up in it. Jesus was only able to defeat the devil because he had the word in him. You cannot defeat the devil any other way but through the word. Develop your mindset. Develop your paradigms with the word of God. You do not and you cannot fight thoughts with thoughts. When the enemy brings evil thoughts your way, you cannot de defeat him by your thoughts or your thinking. The only way you defeat the thoughts of the devil is through the words. So the enemy comes to you, don't keep quiet because a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Don't keep quiet. He's thinking, he's telling you, come on, jump, commit suicide. And you're saying, mm, mm, willpower. You don't defeat the enemy with willpower. You defeat him with the word of God. That's why when he came to Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus said, it is written. It is written. And Jesus did not quote the word of a politician. He did not quote Tupac Shakur. No, he didn't quote uh, Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. He quoted the word of God. Jesus quoted the word of God. He didn't say as my pastor used to say. No, Jesus knew the word for himself. So it's high time you knew the word for yourself. Get into the word. Read it. Study it. Meditate in it. Load it up on your inside. And when the devil comes, you'll be able to whoop his backside with the word. Just as your master and your big brother Jesus did. Glory to God. If you believe that, shout amen. Glory to God. You do not fight thoughts with thoughts. 
but you fight thoughts with the word. Amen. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, we see Apostle Paul speaking about the good fight, the good fight the good fight of faith. Let me read it to you, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. The Bible says, For the good fight, the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, it says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Glory to God. So what is the good fight? What is the good fight? The good fight, people of God, when you talk about the good fight, fighting the good fight of faith is standing on the word or the promises of God in belief, meditation, confession, declaration, and spirit-inspired corresponding actions until the promises come to pass or you get the victory no matter the situation. You fight the good fight by not giving up. You fight the good fight by standing on the word. When we say standing on the word, we're not talking about you putting the Bible on the floor and standing on it. No! We're talking about you putting the word of God in your heart and speaking it forth, releasing it like a gun, like you're shooting a gun through declaration and your confession and then following through with corresponding action. Glory to God. That is how to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, If you do it once and it doesn't work, uh, try it again. You do it the second time, it seems it's not working. Try it the third time, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. uh, Keep doing the word. And I tell you, beloved, it's a matter of time you will break the backbone of the devil. Someone said, if you are willing to stand forever, you will not stand for long. If you are willing to stand forever in faith, in on the word, you will not stand for long. If you are willing to believe God forever, you will not have to believe for too long. God will always come true for you. If you believe that, say amen. Type it in your church. Say, my God will always come true for me. My God will always come true for me. It may seem like it is late, but it will, it will come true. It may seem like uh, it's not it's not coming, but it will come true. It may seem like it is difficult uh, and I'm discouraged, but my God will come true. For his promises in Christ Jesus are yea. And amen. Glory to God. If you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will come true for you. He may not come when you want him to come, but he will definitely come at the right time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Talking about renewal of mind. Let's quickly talk about the disadvantages of unrenewed mind. What? Ah, uh, what, 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 what do you stand to lose? Or what will happen if you do not renew your mind? Failure to renew your mind, number one, will make the word of God of no effect in your life. May the word always bring effects and results in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Mark chapter 7 verse 13, the Bible says, Making the word of God of no effect, that is powerless or no result, through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do this is jesus rebuking the people in jerusalem he said you guys did you you did not have the word of god that was not able to have effect or results in your life the word of god became powerless because of your tradition of your tradition your tradition could be a massive hindrance to the word of God, the renewal of mind. If you do not renew your mind and wash away and allow the word to wash away some traditions or mentalities or attitudes that you have gathered together over time, you may not experience the power of God. The word is not working for you, not because it is not powerful. It is not working because your mindset and your mentality is faulty. 
There is a word called synesis. And when you talk about synesis, you're talking about the gathering of thoughts, understanding, mindset is more like your operating system. Sonesis or your sonesis is the total gathering of your thoughts and understanding, is the total gathering of your mindset. Sonesis is to gather thoughts together collectively onto a personality. Gathering thoughts together collectively onto a personality. That is, you have gathered so much thoughts together and these thoughts have now become like personality on the inside of you. They've developed character, they've developed their own personality. And this is the way you now describe yourself. So Nessus is thinking or, the, or viewing life through the lenses and influences of several personalities or backgrounds that you have gathered over time. Movies you have watched, music you've listened to, some books you have read, people you've listened to, people that have been in your lives that have influenced you, and you have allowed their words and their lifestyle to, 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 to channel or influence the way or your own worldview, the way you think or your worldview. They've become your sonesis. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus developed his sonesis by following the Father. He developed his own worldview. He developed his worldview by observing his Father, the God of heaven. So when you look at Jesus, you are looking at the Father. Some of us gathered our sonesis by looking at our grandfathers, at our dads. Some of us did not, you know, grew up without fathers. And we looked, developed our worldview by what is happening around us. Some women, because their grandmothers had problems with men, their mom had problems with men. So they come up with this sonesis and this worldview. All men are evil. Some guys, because their mom or their dad suffered in the hands of ladies, that every lady is a devil. You have allowed your experience to affect your sonesis. That is not the will of God. You need to let the word of God change your sonesis. Somebody says sonesis. Glory to God. Jesus developed his sonesis or sonesis by following the Father. John chapter 5 verse 19. The Bible says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. And whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Did you hear that? Jesus never did anything until he has seen the Father do it. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 verse 10. He also says, he said, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Glory to God. My sonesis, my worldview, my power, the essence of my being is dependent on the Father's actions. Whatever He tells me to do is what I do. Whatever I see Him do is what I do. Who is controlling your sonesis? Is it the Word of God or the Word of men? Glory to God. Hallelujah. As a believer, our sonesis should be developed through the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible says, For who has known the mind of Christ, or who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you need to develop the mind of Christ if you want to be victorious in life. We should view our life through the life of Jesus. Through the life of Jesus. When you do the work, that is you developing the mind of Christ. Before you do anything, look at it through Christ's view. How will Jesus handle this? WWJD, what will Jesus do? That should be our mantra. In this situation, before you take action, what will Jesus do? Glory to God. 
This is true understanding. This is what leads us into proper development and maturity in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The second thing that will happen if you do not renew your mind, the second disadvantage of, a, of an unrenewed mind is in the, it will hinder your spiritual maturity. If your mind is not renewed, especially as a believer, you will remain a babe. As a babe, I'm talking about an undeveloped believer, a carnal one forever. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. The Bible says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, that is, you ought to be mature, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Milk is talking about babies. Solid food is for adults, matured ones. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Verse 14, But solid food belongs to those who are of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses, their mind, exercised to discern both good and evil. When you allow your mind, you put the word in your mind, in your 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 mind you think about the word you are able to discern between good and evil that is you developing that is you exercising your mind it says their senses are being exercised so if failure to renew your mind will lead to your you remaining as a spiritual babe it will hinder your spiritual maturity may you not be in that spiritually in the mighty name of Jesus. The third disadvantage of an unrenewed mind is you will, it, you know, an unrenewed mind will prevent you from receiving or walking in your rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. All the victories that Jesus has obtained for you will not manifest. Hallelujah. Hence, this will hinder you from enjoying the fullness of God's grace preventing you from walking in victory. Seek today, poor tomorrow. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So you have been blessed, but if your mind is not renewed, you will not be able to enjoy the blessings. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, and of Jesus Christ. So God has provided grace, unmerited favor, and peace. And he's provided them in multiplied form. But this, the Bible says this will come through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So you need to embrace the knowledge. The knowledge there talks about the word. You need to embrace the knowledge. You need to embrace the word. You need to put the word on your inside to enjoy the grace and the peace that God has provided for you. Glory to God. As I go ahead uh, tonight, uh, let me quickly tell you the benefits, some benefits of a renewed mind. Number one, a renewed mind serves uh, as the right platform for revelation. When your mind is renewed, the revelations of God comes easily to you. It comes easily to you. And revelation will always be the bedrock of victory and exploits in the kingdom. Then you can go ahead and do exploit for God and his kingdom. Psalms 119 verses 129 and 130. The Bible says your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. Verse 30. The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. So because your testimonies are wonderful, my soul, my mind keeps them. So I allow your testimony that talks about the word. So I allow my mind to keep your word. And when my mind keeps your word, it brings light to my spirit. And that is revelation. So a renewed mind serves as the right platform for revelation. Glory to God. Number two. A renewed mind gives you the ability to bear much fruit of the Spirit, which in essence leads to greater peace of mind and better relationship with people. 
making your Christian experience or Christian walk much sweeter and smoother. The gift of the Spirit is for power. The fruit of the Spirit is for character. And when you are a man of good character, you can only develop good character when the fruit of the Spirit is developed in you. And you are able to develop this fruit, to develop it by meditating in the Word. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Verse 23, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. That means you are, in, you are in peace all the time. It's not a matter of, oh, am I missing it? You can't miss it when you have uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And as this fruit of the Spirit is developed as you renew your mind. Hallelujah. Number three, a renewed mind enhances your work of faith. It enables your heart to be filled to be fixed on the Lord. Psalms 112 verse 7, the Bible says, He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast or his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Thereby, a fixed heart acts as a solid platform for your faith to work. When your heart is fixed or your mind is fixed on the Lord, your faith is strong. Faith is greatly hindered or hampered when your mind is unsettled. That's why in James chapter 1, verses 6 and 8, the Bible says a double-minded man cannot receive anything from God. But when your mind is single, your faith is strong. Hallelujah. A renewed mind, number four, makes it easy for you to receive and appropriate God's promise in your life. Thereby, thereby walking in consistent victory. Because your mind is renewed and you've accepted what Jesus has done for you through the word, you are able to walk in faith and to receive from God much more. Number five, a renewed mind allows you to walk in greater grace and power. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, we've read that. Grace be multiplied, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge or through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number six, a renewed mind leads to fulfillment of destiny. When all these things are in place, you will be fulfilled. You will be able to accomplish that which God has in stock for you. Glory to God. So as I round up tonight, let's all quickly look at how do you renew your mind? How do I renew my mind? Number one, you renew your mind by memorizing the word abundantly. Memorizing the word abundantly by reading, studying, listening to the word, especially in the area of your greatest need. Psalms 119 verse 120, 119 verse 129 that we read. It said, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul, my mind keeps them. So fill your mind. Fill your mind, fill your soul, fill your mentality with the Word of God. The Bible says the entrance of your Word brings light. When this Word has filled my mind, then it enters. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Let the Word dwell in you richly. Don't let it dwell in you miserly. Fill your heart with the Word. If you are the type that reads seven verses of the Bible a day, come on. Take it to the next level. Finish a chapter. Finish a book. Come on. Read the word. Feel it. Something has to give. You may need to stop watching some TV programs so that you can dedicate more time to the word. You may need to stop reading some novels or reading newspaper so that you can give more time to the world because therein lies your victory. Therein lies your success. Read the word. Hallelujah. Memorize the word and fill it up. Fill up your heart abundantly with the word. Number two, to renew your mind, you need to meditate in the word. Meditate in the word. After you have filled your mind with the word, you need to meditate. To meditate means to think. As you are reading the word, filling your mind with the word, there will be a word. 
a sentence, a statement, or a verse that will stand out to you. Take time to, talk, to, to think about this verse. To meditate means to think over and over. To regurgitate, like when a sheep has, you know, is, in a, is, in, is on the field uh, eating. It will eat and eat and eat. But at some point, the sheep will go to one side and will sit down. But you see the sheep chewing something because the curds that it has eaten, it has put it in a certain pouch in its stomach. But while it's sitting down, it then brings it out, vomits it, so to speak, brings it back, down, back to his mouth and he begins to chew it. And he chews it over and over and over and over again, mixing it with saliva. When it has now chewed it and it has now become soft, that is when he then swallows it and goes into his stomach. But the first part doesn't go to the stomach, it stays in a pouch. That is you keeping the word in your mind. Then you bring the word in your mind that you have uh, memorized, you now bring it to your mind again and you now roll it over and over and over. And you say it over and over and over and over to yourself. To meditate also means to mutter. So as you are going back and forth, you begin to mutter the word. Say the word to yourself. You might be in the bathroom and you're just muttering the word to yourself. You are washing some plates. You are muttering the word to yourself. You are in the, in the train on your way to work or from work. You are muttering the word to yourself. You are in the garden, more in the garden. You are muttering the word to yourself. That is how to meditate and that is how to get victory in life. In jo Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Meditate in the word. Glory to God. Number three. To renew your mind, you need to declare the word you've meditated upon with boldness concerning the changes that you require. You've meditated upon this word and it has become light in you. And you now see the light and you now see yourself in it. You need to declare it. You need to say it out. Proverbs chapter 18 verses 20 and 21. And Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. The Bible says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Verse 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Glory to God. Mark 11, verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, Have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and will not doubt in his heart, but will believe that those things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So you need to say the word. Hallelujah. You need to say the word. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth and declare the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And to renew your mind. Number four, you need to keep good company. Keep good company. This is where the robber eats the road. Amen. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. The Bible says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of, of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. The Bible says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Keep good company. Who are the people you are working with? Who are the people you are working with? Who are your closest associates it's a matter of time you will begin to look behave or accomplish or achieve the same thing your friends are accomplishing if you are a rich man and you have poor people around you and your closest pals are poor guess what it's a matter of time you will be poor and if you are a poor man and your closest associates are rich it's a matter of time you will become rich someone said if you want to become a millionaire, surround yourself with four or five millionaires. And it's a matter of time you will become a millionaire. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. So a man, the countenance of his friends. So if you desire something, stop attacking the thing you want to attract. Stop attacking the things you desire. No! You like it. You like success. 
Look for people who have accomplished it and become their friends. Instead of hating on them, if you continue to hate them, that thing will run away from you. May good things never run away from you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So talking about keeping good company, let me just add a few things to it. To maximize, the, to maximize this or, to, you know, in some other application, part of the application of, you know, keeping good company is uh, attending church regularly. Attending church regularly. Attend church. In this day and age, one of the easiest ways by which you can, easiest ways by which you can make friends is actually in church. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 24 and 25. The Bible says, And let us not, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much more, so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Thank God the restrictions have been lifted. Come to church. Or they have been lifted. Come to church. Begin to, both if it is, uh, if you can't do in person, do the online one. Attend church. Uh, get to hear the word. That is one of the ways, the primary ways by which your mind is renewed. If you can attend in-person service, actual services instead of virtual, I want to encourage you, come on, do that. It is important. In this day and age, during the restrictions, during the pandemic, the issue of uh, mental health issues, you know, went off the charts. A lot of people have suffered mentally. I was speaking to someone a few uh, weeks ago and they were telling me about how the level of suicide had gone up during this time of pandemic. Why? Because people have been kept away from one another. It has affected their, affected their social well-being. So for you to be okay socially, you need to attract, interact with others. Iron sharpens iron. So a man, the, so a man, the countenance of his friends. You need to come to church. That is where you can meet people of like minds. That is where you can meet people who will encourage you. Thank God for online services. Very soon we will start our in-person services. I want to encourage you, come out of the woodworks and come into church. You will be glad you did. Hallelujah. Also, read good books. Read good and wholesome books. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Read good books. Read biographies. Read autobiographies. Read good journals. This will change your mind. Also, change the images you see around you. Change the images you see around you. You want to be prosperous? Begin to think and begin to read about prosperous people. You are sick, you want to be healed? Begin to look at images of people who are doing well, who are, who, who, who are healthy. Glory to God. I know you need to go to the hospital for your checkups, but once you have uh, gone through to the hospital, come on, make sure you go to a sports ground. If you can't do anything, just go there and be watching them. Go to the swim, you know, just go to a sports center and just watch people who are, who are healthy, jumping up, swimming, doing stuff. And as you do this, your mind will be changing. Your mind will change. Glory to God. We see God use this principle in the life of Abraham. As I round up tonight, in um, Genesis chapter 13, verses uh, 14 to 18, God used this principle to change the mindset of Abraham and to give him a vision of enlargement. All Abraham could see proud to that time was his four by four tent. And God asked him, come out and go and, and look to the north, look to the south, the east and the west. He said, as far as your eyes can see, those are the lands I'm going to give you. And what did Abraham do afterwards? In verse 18 of Genesis chapter 13, the Bible says, then Abraham moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terrible trees of memory which are in Hebron and built an altar there to the Lord. Abraham used to live in a small apartment, small tent. But when God told him, you are going to own the land everywhere. What did Abraham do? Abraham moved away from his small apartment and the Bible says he went to a plain. He lived in a field, open space. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
changed your image. Turn to someone next to you, say, change your image. If you need to travel, travel. If you need to relocate, relocate. Change the image you see around you to master or to, 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 to be similar to the things you see on the inside of you. If what you see around you doesn't look like what God has promised you, shift and move to the place that looks like where God has promised you. Glory to God. God also used that of, uh, principle again in Genesis chapter 15, verses 2 and 6 uh, to give Abraham the vision of fulfillment. The first one we looked at, Genesis 13, 14 to 18, was a, a vision of enlargement. But a few years later, to give him a, a vision of fulfillment, of fruitfulness, because Abraham was complaining, I don't have a baby, I don't have a child. Who is going to inherit all these big things? And God said, I'm going to do something for you. Come out from your tent again. So you need to come out. Somebody say, come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God said, and behold, the word of the Lord. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 4. And Bible says, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your hair, but one who will come from your own body shall be your hair. Verse 5. Then he brought him outside and said, so he brought him and said, so come out, come out of this small room, come out of this space and come to the open field. I want to show you something. He said, look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. As many stars as you can, you can count, so shall your descendants be. And the Bible says, and he, that is Abraham, believed in the Lord and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So tonight, uh, I want to encourage you. It is time to renew your mind. It is time to renew your mind. And as you renew your mind, you are developing a winning mentality. That is the will of God for you. No renewal, no, 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 no victory. No renewal, no victory. No renewal of mind, no victory in life. So for you to experience victory in life, for you to enjoy the victory Jesus has obtained for you, you need to renew your mind. Turn to your neighbor for the last time tonight. Say, neighbor, it is time to renew your mind. It is time to develop a winning mentality. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for your word. Father God, I pray for every hearer under the sound of my voice. I pray that the grace to develop a winning mentality be given to these ones now in Jesus' name. I receive for them the grace to develop a winning mentality. I receive for them the grace to think like winners. I receive for them the grace to renew their minds in the name of Jesus. Where we have been thinking defeat, we begin to think victory. Where we've been thinking sickness, we begin to think health. Where we've been thinking lack, abundance becomes our meditation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise. We speak concerning Illumination Church. We declare that we go higher and we go forward in the precious name of Jesus. Everyone connected to this house will not be losers, but they will be winners in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together for Jesus.